welcome to this video about melanoma skin cancer. I want to use this video to answer some of the questions on this screen. They might be questions that you are asking yourself or that have sometimes come up when talking to a friend or a member of your family. Maybe they're questions that you think you can already answer, but it might help to check that you have the right idea. This is the list of questions I'm going to work my way through in this video. What is cancer? What causes it? We all go out in the sun, so why doesn't everyone get skin cancer? How is melanoma skin cancer different from other skin cancers? And are there other types of melanoma? Why isn't surgery enough to cure everyone with melanoma skin cancer? Are there other treatments available? We'll start here with a short definition of what we mean when we talk about someone having cancer. I've underlined the most important words. I took this definition from Cancer Research UK, although I've used the word multiply where they use the word divide. Whichever word you use, the point is that in order for one cell to become two cells, it must go through a step-by-step -step process where it duplicates everything inside it and then splits in two. This process is normally tightly controlled, but cancer cells multiply and multiply over and over again in a very uncontrolled way. And some cancer cells also have the ability to split away from the initial tumor and spread elsewhere in the body. Because there are lots of different types of cell in the body, skin cells, liver cells, nerve cells, etc., there are also lots of different types of cancer, over 200 in total. And in the UK, around half of us will be given a diagnosis of cancer at some point in our lives. On this diagram, you can see the healthy cells are very orderly, living side by side. But the cancer cells are all squished together and pushing out at the cells around them. One of the most dangerous things a cancer can do is to invade nearby tissues and organs, which might prevent them from working properly. Most dangerous of all is when cancer cells break away from the initial tumour and spread elsewhere in the body. It's worth knowing that even when a cancer like melanoma spreads elsewhere, the new tumours that form still have many similarities to the original tumour and they'll often respond to the same treatments. So any new tumours that develop, perhaps somewhere like the lungs or the liver, are called secondary tumours or metastases. They're not called lung cancer or liver cancer because they didn't develop in those locations. They've spread to there from the skin and they still need to be treated like they're a melanoma. It's also worth knowing that melanoma cells that break away often first of all travel to nearby lymph nodes. We have hundreds of lymph nodes inside our body. The fluid in our tissues drains into these lymph nodes and then rejoins the blood. I'm now going to look at what causes us to develop cancer. And I'm going to begin with a bit of information about the trillions of cells that make up our body actually work. We'll begin with the fact that our cells have two main compartments. The main body of the cell, the cytoplasm, and then inside the cytoplasm is the nucleus. Inside that nucleus are our cells' chromosomes, which are made from DNA, our genetic material. It might be helpful to think of DNA as our cells' internal reference library, a store of information that our cells refer back to over and over again. Using the information in their DNA, our cells can make everything they're ever going to need and perform all the tasks necessary to keep our body healthy and working properly. And when I talk about a cell needing to make things, I'm basically talking about proteins. Our cells use their DNA to make thousands of different proteins, which come in all sorts of shapes and sizes and perform different functions. Some of these proteins are used to make energy for the cell. Some transport things around the cell. Some give the cell its shape. 
Some allow the cell to communicate with its neighbors. Some tell the cell when to multiply and even when to die. So if a cell's DNA becomes damaged, the proteins it makes will also be faulty and it might start behaving strangely. Usually, faulty cells self-destruct or they're spotted and destroyed by our immune system. But if a faulty cell somehow survives, it might eventually cause cancer. There are many reasons why the DNA in our cells becomes damaged. I've listed a few of them here. They include the natural unavoidable damage that accumulates in our cells, especially in cells that multiply often. When cells multiply, they have to duplicate all of their DNA and they make a handful of mistakes every time they do this. Cells also perform thousands of chemical reactions every second, and these reactions also cause damage to our DNA. And of course, the things we do can add to this damage, things like going out in the sun. A few other things that damage our DNA are listed here. And if you want to understand more about the things that damage our DNA and affect our risk of cancer, do look at the Cancer Research UK website. The link you need is at the bottom of the picture. Now let's look at skin cancer and why people get it, but also why we don't all get it, despite going out in the sun. The first thing I want to do is dispel the idea that healthy looking skin doesn't contain DNA damage. Because in fact, as an adult, and especially as we enter older age, our skin is actually a patchwork of faulty cells, all competing with one another for space. And these cells contain many of the same faults that we find in cancer cells, just not quite in the same combination. In fact, all of us have cells in our skin that are capable of giving us skin cancer, but most never do. Either they don't quite have the DNA mutations to make this happen, or the cells around them are stopping them, or our immune system is keeping them in check. It's only if a cell sustains damage in specific places in its DNA to a sufficient degree and it avoids our immune system and overcomes the inhibition of neighboring cells that it becomes a cancer cell. And this involves a lot of ifs and buts and maybes and a whole lot of randomness and chance. So if you develop skin cancer, but your childhood holiday companion doesn't, it's because the random mistakes accumulating in your cells have tipped the balance, whereas the ones in their cells haven't. It's not necessarily because you or they did something different. As human beings, we like things that make sense to us, and we constantly try to find meaning and logic in things. If we get cancer, we want to know why, and we tell ourselves that we must have done something wrong, it is just the way our minds work. But with cancer, as with many things in life, nothing is certain. And there's a lot of randomness and chance events that all play their part. So although going out in the sun makes it more likely that we'll develop skin cancer, nothing is certain. I'm now going to look at a few less philosophical questions about melanoma how it differs from other forms of skin cancer, and whether there are types of melanoma other than melanoma skin cancer. In this diagram, the top of the picture depicts the outer surface of the skin with dead skin cells flaking off from the surface. As you look towards the bottom, you're looking at the deeper layers of skin cells. And right at the bottom, you see a glimpse of the dermis layer, which lies beneath the epidermis. You can see that the epidermis is made of many layers of skin cells called keratinocytes. And right at the bottom of these layers, you see one lonely looking melanocyte, a Merkel cell, and a nerve ending. Melanocytes are rare pigment producing cells that share pigment with the cells around them. A mole is an area of the skin where there's an unusually high number of melanocytes clustered together. 
This is another illustration which contains a less detailed picture of the epidermis, but you can now see more detail of the dermis and the layer underneath. It shows a hair follicle rooted in the dermis, but protruding up through the layers of the epidermis, and you can see a nerve winding its way up through the layers. There's also a sweat gland and various blood vessels. In this picture, the melanocytes are barely visible. They're found scattered about in the basal layer that separates the epidermis and dermis. There are two forms of skin cancer that are much more common and less dangerous than melanoma skin cancer. One of these is squamous cell carcinoma, which develops from faulty stem cells in the base of hair follicles. The other less dangerous type is basal cell carcinoma, which develops from multiplying keratinocytes called basal cells, and they're found in the bottom layers of the epidermis. Melanomas develop from melanocytes that live amongst the basal cells. Because less than one in a hundred cells in our skin are melanocytes, melanomas are much rarer than the other skin cancers. However, even normal, healthy melanocytes are cells with a desire to move. So if a melanocyte becomes a cancer cell, it's going to create a cancer that's more likely to be disruptive and more likely to spread than many other cancers. If the multiplying cancer cells spread outwards, the person might notice a mole that's slowly getting bigger but they can also spread downwards, which you can't see when looking at your skin. Some people are told they have melanoma when there's nothing on the skin to see at all. Presumably, the faulty melanocytes immediately traveled away from the skin surface, traveling into their blood and creating tumors elsewhere in the body, but leaving no visible trace on the skin surface. Another thing about melanocytes is that they aren't just found in the skin. You also find melanocytes in your body's mucous membranes. These moist membranes line our airways, our digestive tract, our urinary tract, the rectum, anus and vagina. And there are also melanocytes in our eyes. Because melanocytes are found in all these different places in the body, it's also possible to develop melanoma in all of these locations. In addition, there are various types of melanoma skin cancer. The most common is superficial spreading melanoma, which is the official diagnosis of most people diagnosed with melanoma in the UK. You can find out more about all these rare melanoma types on the Melanoma Focus website. The final thing I want to look at in this video is why surgery isn't always enough to cure someone with melanoma and what other treatments are available. There are actually six main ways to treat cancer, as well as lots of other treatments used to help manage a person's symptoms. Surgery is the most common treatment for people with melanoma, and for many people, it's the only treatment they need. But if there are signs that their melanoma has started to spread elsewhere, perhaps there are a few cancer cells in a nearby lymph node, then the doctor might want to offer a treatment that can travel freely through the body and destroy cancer cells that have spread. Two forms of treatment that are given to people whose cancer is showing signs of having spread are targeted therapy and immunotherapy. Because both targeted therapy and immunotherapy are still pretty new and complicated to understand, there are further videos explaining what they are and how they work. I'll finish with a summary. I began by saying that cancer is a disease caused by faulty cells that are multiplying in an uncontrolled and destructive way. This can happen when a cell's DNA is damaged and it gains new behaviors. Our cell's DNA is getting damaged all the time. The amount of damage in our cells increases as we get older. Some of this damage can be avoided and some of it can't. Our skin contains several layers of cells and is composed of various different cell types. Melanocytes are rare and make up less than 1% of the total. 
but melanocytes are also inherently mobile and resilient. And if they become cancer cells, they cause a more dangerous form of skin cancer than other skin cancers. There are also some other types of melanoma that are rare. Most people with melanoma are treated with surgery, but over the past 10 years or so, we've seen newer treatments created, such as immunotherapies and targeted therapies, which are covered in other videos.